Okay, maybe instead of filming a video, we'll just have a little, little nap. Okay, now we're gonna do this. <laughs> Hi, friends. Welcome back. Today, I really wanted to film this video in a candid way. I guess I've been doing a lot of candid videos lately. Just in the season I'm in is just getting really personal with you and connecting with you and I wanted to talk to you about different ways that coders make money. I think a lot of times we automatically assume that if you are a coder and making money it has to be through a nine to five but in reality there are more ways to make money as a coder than just getting a job actually so many more ways and today i want to share them with you uh to give you insight if you are someone who maybe doesn't want to work a nine to five or maybe wants to have a side hustle and make more money on the side past your nine to five whatever the case may be i'm going to share with you today some ways that coders make the bank yeah is that cheesy can i say that make the bank does anyone say that we just said it before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related videos. Leave in the comments other topics you want me to cover and okay, let's go. I'm sure it's no surprise that one of these on the list, let's make it number one, was going to be freelancing. And I know it's kind of obvious and you know, we'll get to some maybe that aren't as obvious, but I really wanted to include freelancing still because it is such the bread and butter, the cookie cutter way of making money as a coder outside of your nine to five. And I get asked a lot, well, how do I start freelancing? I don't have the network, I don't have the connections, where do I start? And for me, when I freelanced, I did it for a very little bit uh, and it just wasn't for me. It was, I think, too early on in my coding career. Uh, but that being said, if you are someone who's new to coding, I highly suggest still freelancing, just take on smaller projects. Uh, but what I did was I went on Upwork, I went on Fiverr, put myself out there, put my portfolio on there, and just list my services. Now, one of the mistakes I think I did when I started freelancing was I took on too big of projects too soon. Looking back, if I was to start freelancing again, I would start by just taking on very small projects, getting comfortable with the workflow, building myself a workflow, you know, you're just learning how to freelance and getting into that rhythm, and then taking on bigger projects as you grow. Although the money can be pretty tempting when you see this big project for X amount of dollars, you're like, wow, okay, I really wanna take this on, I can do this. It's not worth the stress that comes with it if you haven't had experience freelancing before. So like anything in life, start small, take on smaller projects, and then build it up from there. Freelancing is one of those things that you can do with a nine to five and then gradually make it become your business and your whole, like leave your nine to five and make it your whole business. Or right out the gate when you are learning to code or building small projects, why not build small projects for other people? And I think sometimes people overthink freelancing and think they need to be these experts in it. But honestly, a lot of my friends even, or people I know need websites made as small as, and I understand this isn't fully coding, but as small as, you know, just getting a Shopify website up or a, um, you know, one of these different kind of website builders need help with that. And although it seems to maybe as programmers like, oh, that's nothing, that's not even coding. It's a great way to still start and just learn to how to interact with clients and build up that clientele because you never know who they know. So another thing I would say is don't be too proud to take on smaller projects. Uh, it's really how you build your clientele. The second way that coders can make money is through tutoring. Now this can, tutoring is a vague term because it can really mean a few things. It can mean that you are tutoring one-on-one -on -one in person or virtual. It can mean that you are working at a school and tutoring, or it could mean that maybe you are tutoring uh, through making different courses online. And maybe those are two different things, tutoring and making different courses online, but essentially teaching. Let's group it under teaching. Tutoring is a great way to really reinforce. When I did some tutoring, I did it um, just virtually for a little bit. And what I found, it was a great way to reinforce what I knew and what I needed to learn. And although it wasn't about me when you're tutoring someone else, it's a good way to understand. It's a good way to learn and grow yourself as well. Tutoring, how to find clients, that is the question. Well, I'll talk about it from the perspective of when I was looking for a tutor, where I looked. I literally just searched on Google where to find a tutor for, I think at the time I was looking for React. I like, I love having tutors in my life or mentors and people who are smarter than me that I can ask questions to. So I'm always looking for a good tutor. Maybe not at this moment in my life, but when I was first learning how to code and, and really many stages of my life, I always am 
looking for people to tutor and what I do is I just go online and say tutors in um, I, I live in Toronto so tutors in Toronto and find out you know different a lot of times it'd be computer science uh, students in their fourth year who are looking to make some extra money and there are so many different websites where you can put your services for tutoring on and a lot of ones that offer that you can do it virtually you don't need to be in person Kind of on the topic of tutoring and mentoring others, another great way, one that I actually did but it wasn't fully technical, is to create resources online to sell. And for me what I did was I created an ebook and it was called uh, Things I Wish I Knew When Learning How to Code. So it wasn't a technical book in the sense that it was actually it didn't actually have code on the pages but just more tips on what I wish I knew when starting out in the tech industry and learning to code. And it's a great way to make passive income. Sometimes I'll be driving and I will get a ping from uh, my Shopify store saying, Kling, you just sold an ebook or so-and-so just buy your ebook. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. It's a really cool way to generate income passively. You know, you can do other things on top of that. And then it's just, this is another way to bring income into you and you can make a lot a lot of money doing it and it's one of those things that you're just sharing knowledge you already have. For my ebook, I did two things. I literally made it on Canva at the end of the day. It was just on Canva and I, a good friend of mine uh, is an English major so she is very well versed in grammar and spelling and all, all of that stuff and she helped edit my book with me. She was non-technical but she really helped uh, go through it and make sure everything was spelled correctly, the grammar was correct and all of that. And um, I also hired a friend of mine who is a uh, photographer to take some really lovely photos to make it visually appealing. Now you don't need to go that route, it could be as simple, especially when you get into technical, I feel like people are just so, find it so helpful to have this valuable technical expertise on the page. It could just literally be text and diagrams or pictures of code explaining what you were talking about and this is another great way to generate income and it can be as i mentioned a lot of it because it's you have to make it once and you can sell endless amounts of it so ebooks are a really great way speaking of ebooks i feel like i need to make a technical ebook i've done the ebook before but not super technical but Comment down below if I should make an ebook and what language should it be in? Python or JavaScript is what I feel most comfortable writing one in. Okay, anyways, I'm getting off topic now. Another way that is really popular for generating income as a coder and one thing that I, I think is really cool because it's not just coding, you get to use other skills too, too. Well, with all these you really do, but is blogging about coding. So my, for me, when I am reading about maybe a new programming language or looking into different ways to structure code or best tips, etc. is to go on Medium. I love Medium, I'm a huge fan, but there are so many other resources that you can utilize to blog on. I'm just naming that one because it's my favorite personally. And what you can do is you can start writing about code, writing about the best way to structure your code, writing about the best, you know, there's infinite number of tips and tricks for coding this and that that you can write about and it's a great way once again to really get your presence online, uh, get your name known which can really trickle into other opportunities and also to blogging can make money through a few ways. One is advertisements that will be on your blog so not necessarily medium I don't think they do that but um, if you do your own blog or go on other websites that you can have a third party advertising service so you will see when people go to read it, they will see ads and you'll get a percentage of that. Another way is through partnering with different companies. So you are writing these coding blog posts but then companies start seeing them and pay you X amount to do a little snippet about their product or their service and of course it has to be things you believe in. I'm a huge believer in that but it's another great way to generate income. This might take a little bit longer than the other ways but it's a great way, it's something that you can do on the side while you are doing some of the other things that we spoke about. The last way I wanna talk about to make money, which is a really profitable way, I've never done it, but I've had some friends who've done it and uh, they just like rave about it, is to develop a WordPress plugin. And how you can make money through this is through making it premium, so users actually have to pay to use it. I mean, I don't even know what the stats are for amount of plugins that are used that are downloaded or purchased daily for WordPress, but it would be very, very high. And it's a great way to make it a fun project to develop this plugin and then 
you know, a lot of money for it potentially if people start using it. I mean, of course, just like anything, it's not guaranteed money, but it's a great way to work both with your project, like build a project that's really exciting and also to potentially make quite a bit of money off of it. Okay, those are just some of the ways that you can use coding to generate income. And there's so many more ways than what we typically think of coding as just for software developers, nine to five, and that's it. No, there are so many opportunities and things that you can do with coding. And you really just need to get creative and think outside the box because you can really make it into a very lucrative business. Okay, I hope you found this video very helpful and valuable. Leave in the comments other videos you want me to make, other questions you have. Thanks everyone.